Hi there Smart Drivers, Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about the fundamental components of the air brake system. The fundamental components consist of the compressor, the governor, air tanks, air lines, the brake pedal, and the foundation brakes. And the foundation brakes can be one of four types. We'll be right back to talk to you about that. talking to you today about the fundamental components of an air brake system. The fundamental components are compressor, governor, air lines, air tanks, brake pedal, and the foundation brakes. These are the fundamental components and by no means in this day and age are these the only components. Start with this and then as we go through the course we'll build on the different valves and components of an air brake system and Finally, by the end of the course, you'll have an understanding of why in this day and age, air brakes are bulletproof. This here you can see is the fundamentals of a basic air brake system. This is obviously not what an air brake system looks like, but just to give you some idea of the fundamentals of the air brake system, you can see here, the first part that we need is we need somehow to compress the air in the system. We have an air compressor. The air compressor on an air brake equipped vehicle is exactly the same as what you would find in a garage. The only difference between a compressor in a garage and the compressor on an air brake system is, is that the compressor on the air brake system, it runs all the time that the motor is on. So we need some way to control the amount of air that we put in the system because if we just keep pumping air into the system, that compressor is capable of pumping up to 500 pounds per square inch. We don't need 500 pounds per square inch. We only need a maximum of 135 pounds per square inch. So we have the governor. The governor controls the compressor. Think of the governor on a compressor like a thermostat on a furnace. Temperature in the house gets down to a minimum. The thermostat turns the furnace on. The temperature goes back up to a maximum. The thermostat turns the furnace off. A governor does exactly the th same thing. The system goes down to a minimum air pressure. It puts the compressor back into the load phase and loads the system. In Ontario and some other places, they call it the cut-in. System goes back up to maximum pressure. We know that it's at maximum pressure because the needles, the air gauge needles stop climbing and the system is between 105 and 135 pounds per square inch. At maximum pressure, the air that the compressor is generating is simply pumped into the atmosphere. We either call it the cutout phase or the unload phase. So the governor controls the compressor. We also have to have air tanks to store the air. This is one of the first fail-safe systems in any air brake equipped vehicle, air tanks. All of the air tanks on these air brake equipped vehicles are capable of holding 10 to 12 full brake applications, that volume of air. So if the compressor falls off the side of the vehicle for whatever reason, which it may or may not, there's enough air stored in those air tanks for 10 to 12 full brake applications. On the air tank, we need some way to prevent it from exploding or imploding. All tanks used in commercial uses and industrial uses all have some sort of safety valve on them. This tank here, you can see the safety valve here. The safety valve is designed on an air brake system to evacuate air from the system at 150 pounds per square inch. You as the driver will know that the safety valve is evacuating air from the system because they sound like a machine gun. <coughs> if you hear that sound, you can authoritatively take the uh, vehicle to your mechanic and say there is something wrong with the governor or the compressor, most likely the governor. As well on the bottom of the tank here, you can see a drain valve. All tanks have to have drain valves. Most of them now are automatic or they have some sort of pull cord on them. The reason they have to have drain valves is because when you compress the air, you heat it up, it goes into the tanks, it cools, and the water liquefies inside the tank because of the cooling process. Think of it like a, a drink in the summertime with ice cubes in it. The hot air comes in, in contact with the cold gl glass on the outside. The, vapor, the liquid vapor inside the hot air cools and forms water droplets on the outside of your glass. That's exactly what happens inside of an air tank. Also on the system we can see that we need air lines. The air lines harness and direct the air pressure into the system. As well we have a brake pedal. You can see the brake pedal here. Just push down on it. It's essentially a valve. Brakes on, brakes off. It's for the service brakes two kinds of brakes on a big truck, 
that's equipped with air brakes, the service brakes, and the spring brakes. The spring brakes are primarily used for parking and in the event of an air loss, also for emergency brakes. But for this fundamental system, these are the service brakes, the brakes that you use going up and down the road after you release the parking brakes. The brake pedal is also can be called the foot valve or the treadle valve, but for terms of simplicity, we just call it the brake pedal. The brake pedal directs air out to the foundation brakes, and the foundation brakes consists of the brake chamber, the push rod, the slack adjuster, the S-cam, and the drum brakes. In this case, as you can see here in the diagram, these are drum brakes. There are four types of foundation brakes, drum brakes, disc brakes, air over hydraulic brakes, and to a certain extent wedge brakes. Air over hydraulic brakes and wedge brakes, you're not going to find them in this day and age. They pretty much became obsolete when gasoline engines were replaced by diesel engines. Gasoline engines created vacuum which made air over hydraulic brakes plausible because they could use the vacuum from the gasoline engine to power the master cylinder. Once diesel engines took over, they no longer created vacuum and it was no longer feasible to have air over hydraulic. So it was just the air over hydraulic became obsolete and they went to a completely air brake system. Wedge brakes, in the 20 years that I've been teaching air brakes, I've only ever seen wedge brakes once and that was on a trailer in the island and it was kind of a novelty to take the students out and show them wedge brakes. The question on the test for wedge brakes is they may have one or two brake chambers. That's the question on the test. As well, to identify a wedge brake, the brake chamber and the push rod will be facing into the brake assembly as opposed to at a 90 degree angle as they are on drum brakes. So the brake pedal directs air out to the foundation brakes and as you can see in the image here, it is a drum brake and that is the most common on large commercial vehicles at this juncture. Disc brakes are beginning to make inroads into the industry, not quite there yet. We'll talk to you about the review questions here. The review questions, shut the video off, answer the review questions, and then turn the video back on, and I'll go over the review questions with you. First question, what are the six fundamental components of an air brake system? The six fundamental components are compressor, governor, air tanks, air lines, brake pedal, foundation brakes. And the foundation brakes can be one of four types. Drum brakes, disc brakes, air over hydraulic, and wedge brakes. Second question, what is the purpose of the governor? The governor controls the compressor. The compressor runs the entire time that the motor is running, so we need some way to control the compressor, and the way that we do that is, is that we unload it into the atmosphere or load it into the system. In British Columbia and other provinces, we call it the load phase, pumps air into the system, or the unload phase where it pumps air into the atmosphere. In Ontario and other jurisdictions, it's the cut in or cut out. So it cuts in and pumps air into the system, or it cuts out and pumps air into the atmosphere. Third question, how are the air tanks the first fail safe in an air brake system? The air tanks are the first fail safe in the air brake system because they hold enough air for 10 to 12 full brake applications if they are not replenished. So in other words, if the compressor falls off the side of the motor for whatever reason, there's enough air in the air tanks to make 10 to 12 full brake applications. Question, what is the purpose of the drain valve? The purpose of the drain valve is to drain water from the air tanks so they don't freeze up and cause damage to the air brake components and other sludge and whatnot that is discharged from the compressor and just some of the dirt and sludge and whatnot. Question on the test, how often do you drain wet tanks? The answer to the question is daily. Every day you drain the tanks on an air brake system. And the last question, what is the sound of the safety valve when it blows off at 150 pounds per square inch? The sound is a machine gun. That is the sound of the safety valve blowing off excess air in the system because if you have too much air, you could cause damage to the system and potentially to yourself or other people around the vehicle. So all tanks, used in industry and for commercial uses have a safety valve that blows off excess air or vacuum, prevents the tank from either exploding or imploding is the purpose of the safety valve. Question for my smart drivers. Are you taking an air brake course? Is there anything you need help with in terms of your air brakes? Leave a comment down in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to help you out. 
If you wanna do some practice tests for your air brake course, whatever that may be, whether you're in the United States or in Canada, go over to my website, Smart Drive Test, I'll leave a link here. You can find some practice driving test questions over there for less than $10. Practice driving test questions all provide feedback they're really great questions. I've been an air brake instructor for 20 years. I've read most of the manuals in Canada and the United States. So the questions are informative and will help you to prepare for the theory test that you have to take for air brakes. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. If you like the video, share, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section there. All of that helps us out. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now.